Good afternoon, I am Mr. Rich. Thank you for joining me. In this video, we're doing something interesting. We're doing the determination of the molecular weight or the molar mass and density of air. The air that we breathe, we're going to do this determination. How do you go about doing it? Well, you want to start with the molar mass or the molecular weight calculation. We can do that, assuming the proportion, you know, in terms of the most amount of presence, you have nitrogen being in the top and it's 78 percent of the air and that's diatomic nitrogen or you can say molecular nitrogen you can say again oxygen molecular oxygen that's 21 percent then the next most you have argon and that is around 0.93 percent and everything else the miscellaneous carbon dioxide the sulfur dioxides carbon monoxide everything else smog some pollutants you can put let's just say remainder the calculation now will be based on the molecular weights of these nitrogen you know is 14 times 2 it's 28 times the proportion 0.78 and that's 78 divided by 100 plus oxygen you know is 32 which is a molar weight mass of oxygen diatomic oxygen times 0.21 plus argon that's 39.9 times 0.0093 I'm not doing any more plus because I'll just be estimation. We just have to do this calculation right here because we need this to do the density calculation of air. You'll have 28 times 78% plus 32 times 21% plus 39.9 times 0 0.0093 which is the 0.93%. You're getting 28.93 and we can say here 28.93 grams per mole or if you want you can round it up to 28.96 grams per mole why am i rounding it up to account for that the amount which would be coming from here so we can say the molecular weight is 28.96 grams per mole and the molecular weight of air has been determined because we need that again for the density calculation which is coming up next to calculate the density of air you're going to use the ideal gas law. Remember, density is equal to mass divided by volume, the amount of matter in a given space that represents the density. PV, pressure times volume, is equal to moles times ideal gas constant times the temperature. You know density is equal to mass or volume. Somehow you need to get the mass in here. You know number of moles is always equal to mass divided by molecular weight. You can substitute that right here in place of N. PV is equal to mass over molecular weight RT. I need to keep mass over here, I need to bring volume over there and transfer everything else. And look what happens, pressure times the molecular weight or mm, molar mass if you want to say that, divided by RT is equal to mass divided by volume which is equal to density. And you can represent density as this. It's a part of your Greek alphabet which is called rho. That right there represents the density. It looks like a slant P. That's exactly what it looks like. P is equal to then pressure times molecular weight of the air divided by RT. Now what are we putting here in terms of pressure? You can put one atmosphere. There's nothing wrong with doing that. For molecular weight, we've determined it. It's 28.96 grams per mole. I'm not putting the units here. You know what the units are. RT. 0.0821 now the temperature here you're putting the average temperature as you would a global average temperature which can be 20 degrees celsius but that would be 293 kelvin you'll bring 293 kelvin do that computation you'll have 28.96 times 1 which is the same divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 293 and you're getting 1.2038 so density is equal to 1.2038 or we can say 4 and i'm going to say you know what grams per centimeter cube that can be a good unit there for volume but this exact same computation could have been done in a different way in the same manner that is but with different units and i'm going to show you that you see how we've come up to this part right over here it depends on how you're looking at your molecular weight and how you are looking at your pressure units and the r look what i'm doing I have determined the molecular weight 28.96, but 28.96 is also equal to 0 0.02896 kilograms per mole. I've converted the grams to kilograms by dividing by a thousand. Now look, pressure here, if you were to, we're looking here again at this equation. If you were to look at pressure in terms of pascals, 101,325 pascals, PA, 101,325 pascals is equal to one atmosphere times, that's my pressure item here, times this, your molecular weight, 0 
0.2896 divided by R, but R is no longer 0.0821, it's your other ideal gas constant, 8.314, where you're now representing things in terms of joules and kilocalories and all of that, then you're bringing in that unit, and then the temperature, of course, stays the same as 293. When you do this computation, you should still get 1.204 or some value close to it if I miss some decimal places, but let's see. 101,325 pascals times 0 0.02896 divided by 8.314 divided by 293. I'm getting 1.204. And what will the units here be now? 1.204, now we'll get kilograms per meter cube. Kilogram per meter cube is another unit for density as is grams per centimeter cube. But both of those computations are good. Now you know how to determine the density of air and now you know how to determine the molecular weight of air. Remember, you can use these set of units where your items will be in grams per centimeter cube or you can use those pascals with this other ideal gas constant in terms of kilograms per mole and everything here is laid out for you. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.